This is Dr. Joe Burns from the Southern California Orthopedic Institute. This is the case of a 17-year-old female soccer player who suffered concomitant ACL and medial meniscus injuries. This repair technique will demonstrate a 7-implant Limitex sequent meniscus running stitch. We'll use both medial and lateral suturing technique. The four steps necessary in this technique can be summarized as penetrate, rotate, deploy, and tension. As you see, this is a large displaceable medial meniscus tear in the red, red, and red, white zones. This tear should be amenable to surgical repair. We'll prepare the tear edges with the use of a shaver, a rasp, and occasionally a spinal needle to trephinate the posterior capsule. It's helpful to take some time to fully evaluate the tear pattern and accessibility to properly plan the repair points. The implant sheath, uncut, can be used to measure the meniscus. It can then be cut to the desired depth of penetration outside the knee. In this case, it was cut to a maximum depth of 18 millimeters. This is a 15 degree curved device and should be used to identify the ideal access points prior to any actual meniscus penetration. The first step is now to penetrate we chose a point in the capsule immediately adjacent to the meniscus. Do your best to angle away from the more central neurovascular structures and then deploy the implant with the trigger. The implant will toggle in the soft tissue and obtain fixation. Then pull the inserter back to the level of the anterior meniscal horn to provide adequate slack for the next suture. Confirm implant fixation but do not pull the tip of the inserter outside the joint as you'll likely get it caught in soft tissue if you do so. The second pass will now achieve an oblique vertical stitch. We'll move six to eight millimeters away and carefully rotate the needle so as not to lacerate the suture. A precise but firm penetration of the meniscus tissue is next down to the depth of 18 millimeters. Two full 360 degree rotations of the handle are next. This increases the implant fixation within the soft tissue and also increases the internal friction between the sutures and the implants themselves. The second implant can then be deployed with the trigger and the inserter handle is carefully removed. Excess suture can be ratcheted down or reeled in and the first stitch can be precisely and carefully tensioned to reduce the meniscus back to the posterior capsule. Several small short pulls are ideal for tensioning. Once we're happy with the amount of tension, the process is repeated. The inserter is pulled back to obtain enough slack and the next position of access is selected. This sequent device has seven implants and can therefore create up to six sequential sutures across the meniscus. The third implant is again placed in an oblique fashion beginning with penetration into the superior aspect of the meniscocapsular junction. Tissue is carefully penetrated, and again, two full 360 degree rotations are performed with the handle. And the third implant can be deployed with the trigger mechanism. Fixation in the soft tissue is then confirmed 
and gentle easy tensioning of this third implant is then performed. The suture can be selected to either slide smoothly through the needle, the so-called freewheel position, a position used to create slack, or a second ratcheting position where the suture can be reeled in and tensioned. As the suturing progresses more medially, obtaining an ideal perpendicular access point to the meniscus gets more and more difficult. Careful dexterity is required to avoid skiving through the meniscus tissue. The needle curve can improve access and a fourth implant can be placed. Thus far, all the implants have been placed through the medial portal with the scope in the lateral portal. Again, after penetration, there's two full rotations. The implant is deployed in the soft tissue and the needle is gently pulled back out of the meniscus where it can then be placed into the ratcheting mode for gentle tensioning of the sutures. In this patient, this is as far medial as all inside suturing will allow, so the suture can then be cut. Yep. However, portals can be switched the device can be moved to the lateral portal and the fifth implant can be placed more perpendicular to the meniscus tissue. Switching suturing to the lateral portal will improve your access for fixation of tears extending more anteriorly in the knee. Suturing from the lateral side will use the same steps and the same technique as we did from the medial side. The implant will be tensioned within the soft tissue some slack will be put into the system. And the sixth implant can be placed adjacent to the very edge of the tear. The end of the tear is now visualized. And the seventh implant won't be necessary. There will be one final round of penetration rotation, oh, no. put it, yeah, put the deploying of the implant, and tensioning. Deploy. As shown here, the suture can briefly get hung up on the final implant, but it can be slipped over the top of the implant with a little gentle rotation. We'll switch the suture from the free wheel to the ratcheting mode and gently tension down our final stitch. The open ended suture cutter can then be passed directly down the suture used to cut the final limb. In all, six implants were used to repair this tear. We used a single seven implant device and sutured from both the medial and lateral portals. The meniscus has been stabilized in a good position to heal. She'll be kept touched down weight bearing for six weeks. For more information, visit us at www.scoe.com or www.josephburnsmd.com. Thank you.